Hello, children of God. I'm going to need a helper today. So, who would like to get me a hand? Actually, you're going to need two. So, come on up. Now, I'm going to give you some things, and I want you to just hold on to them for me. Can you do that? Great. All right, so first, I want you to hold this book. It's actually a hymnal, so pretty easy, right? Great. Okay, got another book for you. Here we go. And one more. And now I'd like you to hold this pillow while you're at it. Oh, and one more thing. I want you to hold very carefully this cookie jar. What? Is it heavy? It's okay. You'll get it. All right. So now your hands might seem a little bit full, right? But I have something else that I'd like you to carry. Do you think that you could also carry this bag of delicious candies for me? Now, if you're really gonna carry those candies, I mean, it's one thing to just barely hold them, but what if I asked you to open one and enjoy it? Well, what would you have to do in order to open this bag of candies? It's a little bit tricky when your hands are so full of other things, right? I suppose, you're right. You would have to let go of some of those other things. You'd have to put those other things down and leave them in order to open and enjoy the delicious bag of candy. Now, if this doesn't entice you, I could easily give you something else, some Reese's, some goldfish, whatever you like. But the point is, of course, that you have to put something down in order to take something else up. And sometimes the thing that you are taking is much better than what you put down. I mean, who really wants to carry a bunch of books and cookie jars, right? And no, there are not any cookies in this jar. It's actually just a bunch of cards and stuff, so nothing you'd really want. Well, in the Bible, we hear a lot about times when people have had to put something down or leave something behind in order to take something else. In fact, when Jesus was first calling his disciples, when he was gathering his special friends and followers who were going to learn how to follow him and do what he asked, he asked them to leave some things behind. Some of these disciples that he called were fishermen. Their jobs were to fish. And Jesus said, come and follow me. And you know what they did? They followed him. In fact, they followed him immediately, right away. They left behind their fishing nets. They put away what they had been working on and working for, and instead they followed Jesus. Well, that was their livelihood. That was how they made money and did anything. But they knew that following Jesus was far more important and what they had been doing, or what they had been carrying in a sense. They were willing to put that down, to set it aside, because they knew that what Jesus had to offer was way, way better. They wanted to follow Jesus. In fact, what Jesus told them was, you know, if you put aside that fishing gear, you can follow me and I will help you fish for people. In other words, he was saying, I will show you an even better way even better things to do. I'll show you things that you can do that will gather other people, other followers. So they trusted him. They knew that Jesus had wonderful blessings in store, even that he loved them. And so they followed him. They went with him. They learned with him and wonderful and amazing things happened. Now, it wasn't always easy, but it was worth it. And Jesus calls us to do the same thing. Sometimes our hands get full, in a sense. We do a lot of things. Maybe we're engaged in a lot of clubs and activities and sports, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Jesus calls us to do something new, to let go of one thing and get something else that's even better. He calls us to set down, to set aside some of what fills our time, fills our space, fills our hands, and take something that's even better, 
even better than chocolate, in fact, because the life that God has to offer us is wonderful. It's far better than anything we can imagine. It's not always easy. Sometimes there are difficult things that we have to do and even sacrifices we have to make. But the important thing is to remember that Jesus made the greatest sacrifice of all. He laid down everything. He laid aside his place as God in order to come to earth and live with us and teach us how to live and then die for us so that he could take our sins away and so that we could be children of God. So no matter what else we have, how can it compare with that? In light of all he has done for us, well, it should be easy to say, yes, I do want to follow Jesus. And we'll mess up, but he always welcomes us back. And his arms are never full of stuff. They're open and ready for us. So how do we follow him? We read his word, we come to church, we listen to other people talk about him, and we can share about him too. Most importantly, we can pray. We can talk to God. We can remember that he is present and that he loves us, and we can ask for his help in following him. Why don't we say a prayer right now and we can ask for just that. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Please help us to follow him, to love him, and to serve him. Thank you for loving us. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, go make those fishers of men. And it's okay to leave some things behind, to trade some things for something even better. And then come back again and join us because we have new messages and new craft ideas every week to bless you and your ministry wherever and with whomever you are making fish. Fishers, fishers of men or something like that. At any rate, go make some disciples and have a wonderful week. See you next time.